This video will provide a comprehensive overview of pain and pain management after total joint replacement. What exactly is pain? Physical pain results from insult or injury to the body. The perception of pain is a complex phenomenon that has physical, emotional, and cultural components. Each individual has a different threshold of what they consider a tolerable or acceptable level of pain. This is referred to as pain tolerance. Joint replacement surgery will inevitably result in some postoperative pain. Our goal is to keep the level of this pain within an acceptable range for our patients so that they can actively participate in the recovery process. This is referred to as pain management. Patients who understand pain management are more likely to be able to manage their pain effectively. We cannot make surgery entirely pain-free. Our goals are to achieve a manageable level of discomfort, to minimize opiate medications, to limit the side effects from pain medications, and to allow regular physical therapy to achieve functional goals. The four P's of pain management can help conceptualize the goals. These include prevention, psychological preparation, physical preparation, and pharmaceuticals. Now we'll talk about the pain pathway. The sensation of pain travels from the site of injury along a peripheral sensory nerve to the spinal cord and then to the brain. The perception of pain actually occurs in the brain. Pain can be addressed at multiple levels along the pain pathway using different strategies that work at each level. Rather than treating just one level, treating all levels can provide more thorough pain management. This strategy is referred to as multimodal analgesia. While none of these medications may be effective alone, the combined effect is greater than the sum of the individual medications. We call this a synergistic effect. Opioid sparing surgery has become an important goal with the recent epidemic of opiate addiction. With the multimodal strategy and proper preparation for surgery, both mental and physical, many patients can limit the number of opiate medications they require after surgery. This reduces the negative side effects and problems with tolerance and withdrawal from opiate medications. Grit and determination are important elements in the recovery of joint replacement. Grit refers to perseverance, passion, hardiness, and resilience, for long-term meaningful goals. Motivation and determination to achieve a great result increase the likelihood of success. Pain may fluctuate from day to day, and it is important not to focus on short-term bumps in the road. Focus on the end goal and a positive outlook. There are three phases in the pain management pathway, and we will now review these. These include the preoperative phase, which occurs in the days prior to surgery and immediately before surgery, the intraoperative phase, which occurs during the surgery, and the postoperative phase, which occurs after surgery and continues throughout the recovery. We'll talk about the preoperative phase. Research has shown that taking certain medications before surgery can lead to less pain after surgery. This is called preventive or preemptive analgesia. Introduction of an analgesia regimen before the surgery with the goal of preventing sensitization of the central nervous system to subsequent stimuli that can amplify pain is an element of preventive analgesia. This involves both regional nerve blockades and oral medications. The aim is to reduce acute pain that can subsequently lead to more chronic pain. 
In the preoperative phase, we advise patients to take Tylenol extra strength, two pills, three times a day, starting three days before the surgery. Do not take this on the morning of surgery as it will be administered just prior to your operation in the same day surgery unit. Your last dose that you take should be on the night before surgery. Just prior to the operation in the preoperative holding area, we will give additional medications provided there are no contraindications. These generally include Tylenol 1000 milligrams, Celebrex 2 to 400 milligrams, and Decadron 10 milligrams. Supplements that include calcium, magnesium, and zinc can also reduce inflammation and pain. We recommend purchasing a combined supplement with these minerals and starting it in the weeks prior to surgery and continuing until four to six weeks postoperatively. We recommend taking one pill twice daily with breakfast and dinner. Now let's talk about the perioperative phase and regional nerve blocks. Sensory nerves for shoulders and knees can be anesthetized with local anesthetic before surgery. This is done by the anesthesiologist using an ultrasound for guidance in the preoperative holding area. For the knee, this is called an adductor canal block, and for the shoulder, an interscalene block. These nerve blocks may provide 12 to 24 hours of pain relief. Nerve blocks are not possible for hip replacement surgery, but usually not necessary. Intraoperatively, we use a medication called Expirel. This is a long-acting local anesthetic that time releases over two to three days. It is mixed with another short-acting local anesthetic called Marcaine. These are injected all around the joint at the time of surgery. This implants the medication into the soft tissues, including the joint capsule, ligaments, muscles, and skin. Now we will review the post-operative phase and general principles. It is important to stay ahead of the pain rather than to play catch up. This can best be accomplished by taking medications on a fixed schedule for the first few days to weeks after surgery. As the postoperative pain subsides, you can begin to taper the stronger medications first and use over-the-counter medications as needed. It is important to have enough comfort to perform your exercise routine for proper rehabilitation. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. At your preoperative visit, we will customize a pain management plan, including a schedule of which medications to take at which intervals. We will provide you a sheet that outlines this schedule, making it easier to follow. This schedule serves as a general guide, but may need adjustment based on each individual's response. We are available at all time to discuss any issues with pain management that may require a change of strategy. As previously mentioned, the goal of using a combination of medications is to provide a baseline of comfort that allows you to minimize the use of opioid or narcotic pain medications. You should aim to use the lowest dose of opiates that provides manageable pain relief. This recognizes that pain is normal and to be expected after surgery. The goal is not to medicate yourself to a pain level of zero, but to a level that is tolerable. This level is different for everyone. A multimodal regimen involves taking several different medications on a schedule that works synergistically to reduce pain. This regimen can be tailored to any restrictions, intolerances, or allergies, but it generally includes the following. A non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medication, such as Aleve, 220 milligrams, two pills every 12 hours, or ibuprofen, 200 milligrams, three pills every six hours. Tylenol extra strength, 500 milligrams, two pills every eight hours, not to exceed more than 3,000 milligrams or six pills daily. 
Tramadol, 50 milligrams, one to two pills every six hours, not to exceed more than 400 milligrams or eight pills in 24 hours. Oxycodone, five milligrams, one to two pills every six hours as needed. This is for breakthrough pain if the combination of other medications is not sufficient. Aspirin, 325 milligrams, one pill every 12 hours. As mentioned previously, for some patients, we may recommend baby aspirin or 81 milligrams twice daily instead. And Zofran, four milligrams, one pill every six hours as needed. This is for nausea and only needs to be taken if nausea is an issue. We will quickly review some of these medications, starting with Tylenol. Again, the maximum daily dose is 3,000 milligrams, beyond which Tylenol can impact liver function. The recommended regimen is 1,000 milligrams or two pills every eight hours. Each extra strength pill contains 500 milligrams. As part of the preemptive analgesia, this should be started three days prior to surgery and continued for two to six weeks after surgery as needed. Side effects are generally few. Contraindications include liver disease such as hepatitis or cirrhosis. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, also known as NSAIDs. The effect of these is to reduce postoperative inflammation and pain. There are many brands on the market, and this can be customized for each patient. Aleve, two pills twice daily. Ibuprofen, three pills four times daily. Meloxicam, one pill once or twice daily. And Celebrex, one pill twice daily are all potential options. The schedule of these is to start the evening of surgery as instructed and continue to, for four to six weeks. The main side effect of these is GI upset, and contraindications include a history of stomach ulcers or concurrent use of blood thinner medications such as Eliquis, Xarelto, or Coumadin. Now we'll talk about Tramadol, also known as Ultram. This is a centrally acting pain medication that works in the brain to suppress the perception of pain. The recommended dose is one pill every six hours with a second pill that can be taken as needed not to exceed eight pills in 24 hours. Main side effects include dizziness, headache, drowsiness, nausea and vomiting, and constipation. Stopping tramadol abruptly can cause mild withdrawal symptoms, so we recommend a slow wean to prevent this. Patients on certain antidepressants have a rare chance of serotonin syndrome. We recommend a trial of tramadol preoperatively to assure patients will tolerate it. Oxycodone, also known as OxyIR, is an opioid medication that specifically treats pain. A normal schedule is to take one half up to two pills every four to six hours as needed. Main side effects include nausea, vomiting, drowsiness, and constipation. Prolonged use of opiate medications can result in dependence and addiction. The intent is to use this medication only if necessary after taking all of the other medications in the multimodal regimen. And the goal is to stop the use of opioids as soon after surgery as possible. Overdosing on opioids can cause respiratory depression and death. Some patients tolerate certain opioids better than others. Other medications we sometimes prescribe in place of oxycodone include Dilaudid, also known as hydromorphone, Norco, also known as hydrocodone, morphine, or Tylenol number three. If you have had problems with any particular medication in the past, please let us know so that we can address any potential side effects. Note that all of these have the potential for tolerance and addiction with long-term use. Opiates are a controlled substance and monitored and regulated by the Drug Enforcement Agency through the Prescription Drug Monitoring Program. 
Prolonged use of opiates can result in tolerance. This means that higher doses are required to achieve the same level of pain relief. Patients who are on chronic opiate therapy for other types of pain often have a difficult time with pain management after joint replacement. Studies have shown that patients on chronic opiate therapy are at risk for worse outcomes due to difficulty with postoperative pain management. For this reason, we strongly recommend that patients taper off opioid medications well prior to surgery so they may have more effective pain management after their joint replacement. If you are treated by a chronic pain specialist, you should discuss a strategy for this well before the surgery and have a specific plan for perioperative pain management. The picture on this slide shows a possible taper schedule which seeks to reduce opiate use 10% per week. If this is something that you wish to pursue, you may study this picture and see if this is something you can apply to your own situation if you are on chronic opiate therapy at this time. Long-term use of opiates can result in withdrawal symptoms if the medication is abruptly stopped. To avoid this, we urge patients to limit opioid consumption after surgery and focus on non-opioid medications using our multimodal regimen. If patients have been on opioid therapy for a few weeks after surgery, we recommend a gradual taper rather than abruptly stopping the medications. This can avoid the onset of withdrawal symptoms. The picture here shows the opiate withdrawal timeline. Note that for these symptoms to peak typically takes about 72 hours and symptoms of withdrawal can include nausea, vomiting, stomach cramps, diarrhea, goosebumps, depression, and cravings, as well as anxiety. Constipation is also common from surgery and pain medication. A good bowel regimen can help minimize this problem. This can be started one to two days prior to surgery to jumpstart the process. A good bowel regimen includes high fiber foods, prune juice, Miralax, 17 grams or one tablespoon mixed with eight ounces of water once or twice daily, and Colace, 100 milligrams twice a day. If constipation persists after five days, consider a glycerin suppository or Fleet's enema. I will not review this picture in detail, but there is a list here of the best foods for constipation. As you will note, these include mostly fruits, vegetables, and seeds, all of which are also healthy for boosting healing and immunity and general nutrition and wellness. Our team is always available to discuss issues related to pain management. We're committed to your success and outcome and to helping you through this process. Our multimodal approach has proven very effective for most patients and is a critical part of our avatar program.